Hi there, Psycho Enthusiasts, and welcome to another episode of Friday Psycho Best Practices. My name is Vasily Fomachev, and I'm a Psycho MVP. In this episode, I'd like to show you a quick tip on how to code against Psycho data sources using the Psycho MVC framework. Very, uh, very frequently, I see developers either getting data out of the Psycho context item, uh, or they reach out to get the data source string from the rendering, then they get the target item using that data source and then they get the data fields from that uh, target item. Some developers do go an extra mile and they check for the data source first and retrieve that item uh, if the data source is set or they fall back to the current item. Either way, it takes lines and lines of code to do that. Actually, there is a very easy way to do that with just one line of code. Let me show you. So for the sake of the demo, I created a very um, Quick project. There's really nothing in it except for a couple of a uh, uh, couple of views. So clean CSHTML is, view, uh, is used for the layout. Um, there's really nothing in it, just the placeholder. And uh, we also have the alert rendering, which is a, a, re a simple view rendering in Sitecore, which points to this view. Now notice on line two. This is all that takes to do that logic that we just talked about. The rendering context object in the Cycle MVC presentation namespace has uh, the current rendering object, which has a property of item, which is set to the uh, context item by default. And if the data source is set on that rendering, that property is populated with the item the data source is pointing to. So as you can see, this one simple line of code is doing a lot of clever work for us behind the scenes. And this is all it takes to do the fallback. Now, this is very important to keep this in mind because this will help us with A-B testing, with uh, personalization, um, making this component available for A-B testing and personalization right out of the gate. We won't have to do any changes for it, right? Because we're ha we have the fallback happening here right from the start. So let's see that in action. What I have here is a uh, clean Psycho install, and uh, what I've done is I've stripped the presentation layer off of the home item, and I pointed the sample layout to the clean CSHTML file, and I pointed the alert rendering to the alert CSHTML file that we just looked at. Now remember, by default, that alert rendering is going to look at our context item. So it should render the test alert field. And before we check the page, what I'd like to show you is what I've done with templates. I've created a new template called alert with a simple alert reach text editor field. Now I've inherited that template from the Sitecore item da data definition template, which is used to create our home item. Now, if you're following proper inheritance principles um, and if you're following Helix, especially Helix design, uh, patterns, what you're doing is you're creating modules in your Cypher solution and you're creating section templates. Uh, and those section templates are used by page templates. So page data definition templates usually don't have fields uh, specified directly on them. They simply inherit from different sections from uh, multiple modules. So that gives us great flexibility. Now we can not only uh, create our pages on the fly from the sections that we have available. Uh, we can also instantiate those sections into separate items for content testing or personalization. And here's what I mean by that. I have this section inherited from the sample item da data definition templates, and this is how I'm getting this alert field here. Now, if I'd like to do some A-B testing or personalization, I can instantiate that template into a standalone content item, probably somewhere in the shared content area, and set it to a different value. So now let's go back to our home page. So like I said, uh, since the data source is not set on the alert rendering, it should be pointing to our context item, which is the home page. So let's test that. So right now we're pointing to the home page. And here we go, we have test alert, just like we expected. 
Now let's go ahead and update the data source and set that to our newly instantiated alert item. In theory, our message on the web page should now update to the website has changed. Let's go ahead and refresh, and there it is. So as you can see, that simple line of code gives us gives a lot of advantages. So we can now create fallbacks. One, create A-B tests and uh, multivariate split tests. Two, and also apply personalization to that component. Three, right out of the gate. And no other coding, coding is required. So hopefully you see the benefit of uh, using that just one simple line of code and uh, use that in your solutions going forward. Again, this syntax here might not be the preferred way. This is uh, definitely not a strong, strongly typed way of doing things, but you get the point, right? So hopefully you like this tip, and uh, uh, if you did, give me a thumbs up. Uh, subscribe to my YouTube channel, and for more tips like this, check out cmsbestpractices.com, and I'll see you next Friday. Over and out.